Yeah, ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den, Legacy and the Radio. Next question, Big Bro, you up first. Uh, there are two things that I want to bring up behind this question, but I'm going to ask the question first, and then I'll bring those two things up. The question is, if you have made it, and you can insert your own definition of made it in your thought process, in your answer, Didi, Taji, Big Bro, and Miss Tony, if you've made it, if you came up, do you have a moral obligation to go back to the hood and bring some folks with you? Now, I'm going to say it that way because as a black man, I can only speak as a black man. But this applies to all communities. This applies to white folk. This applies to the Latino community. This applies to Asians. Doesn't matter, whoever you are. If you have come up, if you have prospered, if you've done well, if you're that person that people get excited when you come back home, do you have a moral obligation to reach back and bring some people with you? That's the question, and I'm going to slowly trickle in two stories uh, that I have here that will play into that question. Big Rojo, you up first. All right. So I, I, I'm glad you asked me that question, and I'm going to use the word moral as an adjective because I had to go to Webster's to check it out real quick <laughs> because I know I, I'm, I'm, you're going to see why I did it I use the word moral and as the adjective moral is uh, the definition is of or relating to principles of right and wrong in behavior ethical expressing a teaching a conception of right behavior conforming to a standard of right behavior now I'm going to just stop right there because you asked the question that if you made it <laughs> And you come up, do I have a moral obligation to give back? You're fixing that Joan over there like the preacher. Oh, yeah, boy, you what? <laughs> you know, about to preach. I don't believe that I have a moral obligation because I am no one's role model. Mm, wait, because I feel some tensions and stares, and I can feel my big sis over here huh? looking at me like, uh, really? That's what you're saying? But no. I don't think you have a moral obligation because they're saying that that's a right behavior. I don't think you can attach a behavior to doing good deeds and to doing good. Right. I like that. I, I don't think you can attach an adjective to doing good. I think that if I made it and somebody else extended their hand, I have the right to, I have the, then I have the objective to pay it forward. Mm. Diddy, what you think? <sighs> Tough one, ain't it? Not really. Not really. Not it's really? only I, I sigh because I'm not from the hood, so you not? No, man. I'm oh. from the suburbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the first time I ever heard somebody keep it one hundred about being from I'm the suburbs. I'm not from the damn hood. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's, it's, it's for real. My mom and daddy true. might be listening. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not from the hood. I'm not from the hood. I don't care what nobody from my neighborhood says. We did not live in the hood. There wasn't a hood. It might have been a it was a middle class neighborhood. It was you know? a neighborhood. It was not a neighborhood. A no, I didn't live in the hood. The hood to me is um, growing up in, and I hate saying projects. But you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but it is what it is. In, in, um, okay. In Jersey City terms, it's the project. Oh, okay. Down, <laughs> or down down <laughs> here, is the, down here is the courts. Project. Is the courts, courts in the park? That's what you call the courts it, yes. in the park. The I didn't grow up in that. Yeah, so, yeah. but if I can go, no, nah, nah, I ain't go there because yeah, I'm gonna keep it 100. My obligation is to take care of my family if I can. If I come up that much, family easily getting taken care of. Yes. And from them, then I'm going to their family. If I can help somebody else, yes, I am, because that's just the kind of person I'm, I am and I, the person that I strive to be. I would love to be able to help somebody else come up. I would. Hopefully, if I make it like that, I can. Um, a moral obligation. I don't know if it's, it's just something I would do. That's just I, 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 I want to get everybody's kind of initial opinion in on this one and then I'll let you all know why I'm asking the question Tony you are first before Taji speaks on it do folks who came up have a moral obligation to reach back into the hood and to help others who are following behind them a very important lesson that I learned early on in my life is that don't nobody owe you nothing nothing 
And I learned that lesson because I lost both of my parents at a young age. By the time I was 13, both of my parents were gone. And I thought, I'm an orphan. People going to take care of me. They're going to pay for my school. They're going to make sure I got what I need. Not the case. Right. This, this, this world is ruthless. So. Chew you up, spit you out. Who? I said it will chew you That's up. That's right. Yes, it, right. Exactly. Out. And yeah. then kick you to the side. <laughs> right. So, you know, I try to work very hard. I have worked very hard to get what I have, and I'm still working towards, you know, bigger goals. But no, it's not my responsibility to take care of anybody but my child. You know, of course, like Dee Dee said, you know, you want to try to be a good person and help people, you know, as much as you can. And I try to do that. I'm not rich, but I still try to do what I can to help other people because I know what it's like to, to not have and to need. And I don't want anybody to have to experience that. But there are those who you look at and they, ex they expect you to, you know, take care of them. They expect a handout. They, they, that's how they live is on handouts. Right. So, yeah, I don't owe you nothing. I, I look at it like this. Um, I'll, I'll just kind of say what I'm going to say and I'll f kind of filter in the story here. I, I, I'm one of those people who you push me and I pull you. I got that phrase from the number one true fighter, Warren Ballantyne. You know, uh, you know I, I, I think that it's important that everyone take care of each other. Uh, I guess that makes me a socialist. <laughs> uh, you know oh, what gosh. I mean? You know, Taji, do, does that make me a socialist? Um, ideally, yeah, that's I, on the ideal. But um, what I wanted to say is um, about the moral aspect. It depends on how you got it, man. You know, you're talking about, you know, you coming up in the hood. Is it your moral obligation to give back? First and foremost, it depends on how you got it. Because if you stepped on the backs of the people that you are around to get it, then you're probably going to get pulled back down trying to reach them. You know what I mean? But a moral obligation, not so much a moral obligation, but um, you came from where you came from. And so there's others that are just like you. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And if somebody did not help me and I got what I got, that doesn't mean I can't help someone else. Right. Do no. you understand no, what I'm I can saying? So that's a personal thing, I think, you know, you know, if you want to give back or help someone, but a moral obligation across the board, kick rocks, kill no. yourself twice. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he said twice. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Resurrect you know, yourself. Right, that, you that, kill that, yourself right again. That, that's that's funny as hell. You remind me. You remind me of uh, Big Ruth. Uh, I, I, well, <laughs> he would say selection. that, but uh, I think. Uh, uh, ICJ would say that uh, that's his phrase kill yourself <laughs> that's he always says that he, he cracks us up hopefully he's listening and you know I have step in with Marcus J I, I, I really honestly I, I think I guess I'm a socialist because I think that it's important for each one to teach one and each one to take care of the next one and so moral obligation I mean if we're speaking of morality morality in the sense of understanding the right thing to do if you have come up and you see someone is not doing very well morally it would be a wise thing to help them obligation eh? i don't know if it's an obligation but it was it would be the right thing yeah. to do two stories that i saw that made me want to have this discussion ladies and gentlemen um stefan marbury and michael jordan Stephon Marbury uh, was a NBA player, played for several teams, Phoenix, Suns, New York Knicks, Minnesota Timberwolves, amongst others. Didn't have a longstanding career in the United States. He went to China and became a legend. Uh, he, he ended up, uh, before he left here, he had a sneaker that he had on the market for $15. By all accounts, it was a... Very nice sneaker with regards to the quality of it. Um, it didn't do very well because people chose not to buy them. But the quality of the actual sneaker, uh, by all accounts, is no different than the other sneakers that are on the market. Now, we all know about Michael Jordan and the Air Jordans that have been on the market for basically the better part of the last 30 years. And... Uh, we're getting a caller, so I'm going to take this call, and then I'm going to finish this point. Ain't no half-stepping with Marcus J. Live from the Den. 
Legacy Internet Radio. We got a call on the live line. Caller, what's your name? What you calling about? Hi, Marcus. This is Chantel. Chantel. <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? And no, I don't like to hear myself talk. Shit. <laughs> 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 so you say, what you want to get in on? Um, actually, I was listening to um, the conversations in reference to um, the Million March and giving back. And I, I guess I miss a lot of the times when I was growing up, we, you know, you had the community centers and you had places where there was an outlet for kids to get rid of some of this energy. And I think that's what's missing. And a lot of the time, you don't necessarily have to have a a moral um, to give back. Just giving back. I mean, like you said, if you if you reach one, you, you're doing your job. And that person may take the little bit of knowledge that you've given them and and give it to someone else. Right. It's all about just extending a little courtesy to someone who who actually needs it or who doesn't always have a male ro- role model in their life. Right. Now, I can dig it. Anybody want to address what, what, what Chantel just said? Well, uh, I'm going to go back and say, like you said, I, I, I agree. Um, you know, we had a lengthy conversation about the fact that we still need the, those those parents who aren't doing their parently duties to step up and be the parents that they're supposed to be. You know, we've had I these agree. conversations. You know, if just because, and you can't use the crutch that you don't know how to be a parent. I, I, I don't understand the, that you don't know the, how I don't to think be that parent. was the, the, the argument. The, cr- the argument not even the argument, but the conversation was in reference to, yeah, I can teach a man certain things, but you can't always teach a man how to, or a boy how to be a man. Right. I and feel that's those what I said. certain things, that has to come from a male role model or a male figure in that person's life. I disagree. Uh-oh, wait. What you you, that? You you disagree? I disagree with that. As a, as a single mother of a almost 17-year-old young man, I uh-huh. will say that I have done a darn good job raising my young man as a single uh-huh. mother. You are. Right. Hey, that's yeah, a you right. thing. I will never ever. I mean, and are, I have right. I have a you 13 right. year old son, and I'm doing it as well. You know, it's like I've done this. Me, me and my child's father split up at the age of two when he was two. So for the last 13, 11 years, I've been doing it single handedly. I'm the one sitting up in the in the barber shop getting his haircut. I'm the one saying, look, son, you can't do it this way. Make sure you do it this way. I'm making sure he has all A's and B's, mostly A's, on his report card. So I do totally understand what you're saying. And, and that's great. And, you know, like I said, we'll never, ever take away from you ladies. Ever, ever take away from you ladies. I, and this is just Joe, and I might sound a little chauvinistic, but I still say, and this is just my feeling, this is Big Bro Joe's feelings on this, that you still need a man because you, certain things that you all are unable to teach them, it, it is. Those are kind of fact. Yeah, it's it's a little bit of that. Man. Yeah, I just wanted to piggyback on what Joe is saying. You know, I was raised. Is that life? <laughs> <laughs> like I was. I was. I was. Uh, <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> Go ahead, Taji. I was raised by a single uh, mom, and she did a wonderful job. And as a man, now it was certain things she could not teach me. You understand? I'm not taking away from none of the ladies. I'm not taking away from the job that's being done. But uh, uh, some of the things I had to get to be a man or to be the kind of man I wanted to be, I had to get on my own. Right. I had to get it from uh, a best friend's brother or a best friend's stepdad or, or, or the old guy in the neighborhood who was the wise guy. I mean, you had to get it where you could get it, you know, because, and like I said. And if you're talking about what I think you're talking about, I think I'm kind of sort of going through that right now. So uh, I'm just going to leave that at that right. point. Well, I'll, I'll, I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tony. Sorry. No, I was just going to say it really does take a village to raise a child. Oh, so yeah. I definitely, you know, yes, I was there with him every day and every night. But there were people in my life, in my circle, who helped to influence and to help me because, you know, I'm still figuring this thing out. 17 years in, I'm, I'm still figuring out and, you know, trying to, trying to be the best parent that I can be. So, you know, no, you can't do it alone. You can't do it by yourself. But, you know, to, to, when I hear people say, you know, it takes a man to raise a man, I disagree because as a woman, I know what a real man 
what characteristics a, a real man needs to possess. I know what a real man looks like. I know a real man needs to carry his hand pats to work every day. You need to learn how to cook, wash your clothes, clean up. You don't depend on nobody to do nothing for you. Okay. Now, the, the, the sexual stuff. <laughs> I try to talk to him about that. He just be like, oh, stop. Well, because you're his mama. But it, it, so here's the deal. I'm trying to help you That's out. The whole point. Chantel, thank you for calling, girl. Have a good one. All right, call us back if you, you want to get in on anything else later on in the show. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. Let me just kind of address that before I, you know, we move back on to the rest of the, 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 the piece of the story. I was fortunate, and I know that I was fortunate because I had my mother and I had my father, and I'm fortunate enough to still have them. Um, and I agree that there are things that you as a male child can only get from a male role model. While I respect the single moms in the world, um, because I mean, there's nothing more important than your mother. And even those of us who had our fathers, we understand that. But there's certain things that you learn from your dad that you can't learn from your mother. It doesn't mean that you didn't have a good mother. It doesn't mean you didn't have a great mother that taught you and raised you and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't mean that a man that came from a two-family great household didn't turn out to be an asshole. You, you can still turn out to be an asshole. Sure right, you right. still can. But, you know, I mean, it, it, it all sounds metaphorical. And Taji, Big Bro Joe, and yours truly will probably be hard-pressed to give you a specific example of what we mean by it takes a man to raise a man. Like, we, if we sat here and we thought about it, we can probably come up with some examples. But it's one of those things, like, if you look in the mirror in the morning before you go to work and you go, eh, then you probably shouldn't wear that. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of like that. And so it, it is what it is. Just like it takes a woman to raise a girl. You know what I mean? You have to have the balance. You have to have You got to have the balance because I'm going to teach her how to relate to men, but you're going to teach her how to be a woman. Right. Real talk. Because I taught my girls all the dirt that I used to do so you would know not to follow that clown who's doing dirt the same way I used to do it and whatever. There it so, is. But there is a balance. And like I said, you know what? I'm a cook. And I wash my own clothes, and I do windows, and I can mop. And guess what? My pops didn't teach me that. My mother did. But she taught me that because she told me you might find a woman who can't do none of those things. Yep. There you go. So I'm not ever going to go hungry. Well, you, <laughs> you can ask Marcus J that because he always eating at my house. You should but maybe not talk <laughs> Between to you and your daddy, I know I'm going to eat at your house. <laughs> Ain't no half stepping on Marcus J live from the den. Legacy Internet Radio. Th thank you to the, those folks that are listening to us on TuneIn right now, as well as the replays like a year from right now on the podcast on YouTube. It's because y'all is why we keep doing this. 804-402-2893. Be vain like Chantel. Call us up. Be part of the show. Finish that point that I was making on Marbury and Michael Jordan. As far as there being a moral obligation to do better with regards to the community, Marbury has a $15 sneaker that is of the same quality as the Michael Jordan $200 sneaker. And Michael Jordan has been on record as saying that, you know, everybody buys sneakers, white people, black people, Republicans, Democrats. So... When I ask the question, is there a moral obligation? That is the backdrop. One other thing that I want to bring up, Carmelo Anthony of my New York Knicks was recently in Rikers Island there mentoring uh, inmates, particularly the young ones, the high school and college age young ones, talking to them about some of the mistakes that they've made and the things that they need to do when they get home from being in jail. We know that there are a lot of people who do that. A lot of people who do that, but there are a lot of people who don't do that. And so when I ask the question, do we have a moral obligation to give back? It is with the backdrop of those two stories that I ask the question. Tony. We do not, I repeat, we do not have a moral obligation. Those people who do give back, not all of them do it from a place of genuine kindness and concern. A lot of celebrities, stars, whatever you want to call them, do it for the publicity, sadly enough. And yeah, you know, those kids or whoever, you know, they're benefiting, it does help them. But again, like, you're nothing to me. I'm not going to applaud you because you're doing something just so you can get some PR. Basically, yes. I, I can dig it. I mean, 
but see, the thing is, do we assume that's why they're doing it, or do we assume that they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart? You know, assumption, we know what the word assumption is. Everybody knows the cute little analogy for assumption. <laughs> but what I'm asking, and the way I want to really think it is, or discuss it, it's not so much about, you know, publicity. You know what I mean? Like, do we have an obligation? And the reason why I brought, another reason why I brought that up is I had a discussion with someone. We were talking about, do you have a different reality because you are in the limelight? You know what I mean? Like, do you have to walk by a different set of rules, Didi, because you're the president of the United States, because you are Sean Carter, Jay-Z, because you are Joe Biden? You know what I mean? Like, do you have a different rule set because the masses know who you are? You're a public figure. Uh, yes, I, I completely think you do. You do. It Is that fair? It may not be fair. Okay. It may not be fair, but you are a public figure. You put yourself in that situation. Listen, you can't be uh, this great, um, I guess, <laughs> using this Michael Jordan, Stefan Marbury example. My issue with Michael Jordan is y you know the drama that's being caused by your shoes, not just here, people buying them. I think that's dumb. Y you choose to stand in line for hours on end to buy a pair of shoes. That's your dumbest. Um, but he knows that because everybody knows that Nike is using overseas workers and paying them $2 a week to make his $200 and $300 shoes. He has no problem with that. He has no problem with making money off of the back of slave labor. I'm sorry. That's what it is. You I think a, he has a moral obligation to you, say something. So you got a problem with that? I have a problem with that. I, no, no. He doesn't have a moral obligation to say something. He needs to do what's right and say something about it. Simple as that. Tony? As far as people who are, I guess, in the limelight, it depends on your position. So I would not hold Jay-Z to the same moral standards as I would the President of the United States. Because the President of the United States is supposed to be acting in the best interest of the United, of, of American citizens. Jay-Z is an entertainer and an entrepreneur, and he is going to do what's best for Jay-Z. I, I understand what you mean by that, but here's where I will disagree with you. I'm going to disagree with you because if it wasn't for Tony and Joe and Taji and Didi and Marcus, there wouldn't be no Jay-Z. And so we even though we didn't vote for you to go to D.C. and make decisions about the world, like a president or a congressman or a senator, we, as a consumer, are the ones that have put you in a position yes. to be prosperous. And so there is a difference with regards to, in my opinion, the obligation, not the moral obligation, but the obligation. Because the person that you voted for is obligated. Right, so but what the obligation? Moral, but the, he, he, that person is, you know, vote, voting or legally obligated. Right, but what so what obligation does a Jay-Z have to, to me? Uh, me? Well, to you, I mean, I guess you would have... Or any of us who's, who I, have I, I purchased mean, I, I, I think this. I think, that, honestly, and this is something that I know, because as somebody who does a radio show and owns a radio station, I know that people who support me, I need to show support to them. It's important to me to do that, and I'm obligated to do that. If you show me love, then I need to show you love. If you listen to my show, if you listen to the other shows on this station, and then you come to me and you say, Marcus J., I've got this event. I'd really like for you to come. That is my moral obligation to show and prove that I appreciate the fact that you have supported me, and I'm morally obligated to show support to you. That's how I, and, 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 and it's okay that we're disagreeing, but I feel strong about that. No, while you're a superstar to me and everyone else in this yes. room, <laughs> look, I will, <laughs> I disagree, I, I don't see them the same way because you, as Marcus J and the owner of Legacy Internet Radio and community activists, you are doing things to help our people. And that's why we support you, because you support other people. It's, I mean, it's, it's circular. But Jay-Z, I mean, he's, that's his job. That's how he makes his money. That's his job. 
I just he don't owe you say, nothing for about, his, about, his job. How about a thank you? Is that good he enough? He thanks his fans no, at his no, concerts, no, doesn't no, he? No, what I'm saying is, you're uh, talking about. I love y'all. We no, pay for that thank you. No, I'm uh, saying, exactly. you're talking about supporting people who support you. All right. If I just gave you $12 for your album, that's the support. You just gave me a good album. That's an even exchange. We're done. Right. So I don't owe, <laughs> and I don't owe, that's the thing. I don't owe but you as anything. As far as Jay Z goes. Right. I don't, right, owe, I don't you owe you anything. anything. Right. A public figure. Right. You chose to take this particular position. You're a public figure. That's right. the key word. The people are going to see you. Hey, whether you do it out of an obligation or the kindness of your heart. If it, if if it can in turn help someone, then it's help. Help is help. You know what I mean. Exactly. Help is help. It, you know well, and I mean? that's what I said. If if whether it comes from a place of kindness or right. a place of I'm just trying to get some publicity. If I'm hungry, it helps somebody. If somebody want to give me some food, I could care less what right. they feel in their heart. Give I me the concur. food. Nah, I can dig it. <laughs> I, I can dig it. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J live from the Den Legacy Internet Radio. We're gonna take another break, y'all. And when we come back, we are going to address the comments made by Raven Simone and Ghetto Names. Uh, Yeah, we got a lot to get into. We got a couple other stories, some that we teased earlier that we may not actually get to, uh, but that's cool because if you're a long-time listener, you know we're going to push it out to next week, but we're definitely going to talk about that. Tony, you wanted to say something? Yes, I just wanted to give a quick shout-out to um, Miss Katrina Mazak, who's listening and has been texting me the whole show. Oh, word. (laughs) Say say what's up to your bestie, girl. Yeah, I'd like to give a shout-out to to, uh, my lady, Gloria Stevens. She's listening. What's up, Gloria? I, I, I also like to give a shout out to my niece. She had her baby today. Oh man! Congratulations! 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 congratulations. congratulations. No doubt, so no before uh, before we go on, shout out to Katrina. She's a long time listener and a long time supporter of Legacy Internet Radio. Special shout out to Gloria. Thank you for listening on the strength of our brother Taji, and hopefully you will come back and listen to us going forward, big bro. Hey, I'm a, you know that, that, that person that we spoke about earlier, I'm going to go ahead and give his name. He said, yeah, it's cool, Big Jimmy. Okay. Um, is sitting there saying to us, hey, you know what, that our president should, someone who's in a public office, our president should be a role model. They should be a role model, especially for our youth. Yes. Okay. Which is somebody, I, you know, I can agree with that. We got to make sure that we put the good face and the good acts out there to, so mm. they can be retrieved back from our youth. It's kind of hard to help a grown an old dog with new tricks. Right. <laughs> no, I can dig it, Jimmy. That's a... Excellent point, and I'm glad that you made that point. That's an excellent addition to the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for listening, Jimmy, Gloria, as well as Katrina. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. Live from the Dan Legacy Internet Radio. We're going to take that break. We're going to talk about Raven Simone and uh, a couple other things that we have on the docket. So whatever we can get to, we'll get to. Marcus J. D.D. Yes, sir. Ty J. Yo. Big Bro Joe. Yeah.